Russian envoys, but the United States has been refusing to meet with the Russian foreign minister. That's even unprecedented during the Cuban Missile Crisis to refuse to meet with the Russian foreign minister. Well, there's a very good reason for that, Alex, and that is that the um, the United States simply, you know, has to be careful. Russia knows that the U.S. created ISIS. And so when the Russians going to press the U.S. about the fact that they're not you know, sharing any target information with them, they don't want Russian information, they don't want to tell them what targets not to hit. I mean, that's a tacit admission that um, we don't want Russia to engage with us directly over ISIS because it will expose the fact that we don't want ISIS taken down. Um, now, on the other hand, Russia has been working fairly smoothly with both Israel and Saudi Arabia um, and how should I put this? Uh, you know, Israel is completely in the globalist pocket. Stay there. Explain that when we come back. Joel Skousen, World Affairs Briefs, our guest. Stay with us. We're going to open the phones up for Joel Skousen in the next segment. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. Now, I don't think Hillary Clinton's going to actually try to confiscate our guns starting in 2016 if she gets elected. I don't think she'll try to confiscate them up front. But with registration and with banning the gun show loophole and with banning the transfer of firearms and with restricting semi-autos, they will begin the process towards criminalization of gun ownership. But I've got to ask Joel Skousen the question, why would Hillary, Obama, Democrats on CNN, MSNBC, Coming up in the third hour after he's gone, we have a big compilation of this we're going to be playing. Come out and say, no, we are going to do Australian-style gun buyback and take all semi-autos, which they call automatic. Why would they be signaling such a strong intention when in the past they would admit it in their literature and in their fundraising, and, and they've done this in the cities they control and the country's globalist control, but why would they be so honest and say, yes, we're going to try to move for Australian-style plans, I mean, that will cause what I would call a civil war in many areas. I mean, I, uh, A, why do you think they're doing this? B, do you disagree that an attempt to ban most firearms will explode? Well, I think that, frankly, this is a political move to help sabotage uh, Hillary's uh, bid for the presidency. Uh, the Democrats have long learned, learned that you can't vote for gun control and even get reelected in a Democratic area, except for very few areas anyway. Uh, so there's no reason politically to bring this out. Hillary has evaded the issue of gun uh, control of before in the campaign to come out. They, you know, I'm not in favor of the Second Amendment. I'm in favor of uh, repealing the Second Amendment. That's a death knell to Hillary Clinton. So I think this is sabotage from her advisors of her campaign. Or I agree. I mean, I'm no super political analyst, but this is this is two plus two equals four. This is suicide behavior politically. It is. Uh, I mean, clearly, you can't even pass a gun control treaty in the UN. They're going to have to bypass that in some way. I agree with you completely. They're going to be working on nibbling around the edges, getting registration. Registration always leads to confiscation. Eventually, uh, gun buyback is a, is a nice looking way, you know, to confiscate uh, or precedes that. Um, but they're, they're not going to be able to take this fast at all. Well, I agree with you. It's not mental illness and, and them being delusional. It's, it's bad advice. And they're not stupid. So I guess she's stupid then. She's pretty smart. Why would she continue? She's made like four of these statements the last two weeks. Why would she come out and, and, and talk about repealing the Second Amendment and stuff? I mean, uh, well, she knows that plays well to the hardcore left, uh, which, you know, Bernie Sanders has played to the hardcore left, and she's trying to get those votes back. So I can see how she could easily be induced by her advisor to say, yeah, this would be good for, you know, degrading uh, Bernie Sanders' appeal by appealing to gun control. I don't think she realizes that her campaign is being sabotaged. Uh, I mean, clearly, you've got to remember that the Democrats surrounding Hillary really believe that the powers that be are pro-Democratic Party and are going to let them win. But the guys really under the scenes that are calling the shots don't want Hillary, and I think they're setting up for a loss, and this is part of that. 
I agree with you. Do you think they're readying Biden for a serious run, or do they want to make a change and put a Republican in? Well, they want to put a Republican in. Um, and I, I personally, my gut feeling is that Biden isn't going to run. And one of the reasons that I say that is because they, the media has put a big push on to say that Hillary Clinton has been boosted in the polls some 10 percent because of the debate. Now, the debate's history already, and that boost would have showed up immediately after the debate. Now that they're boosting it, it's kind of as an indication, let's make Hillary unbeatable so that Biden will kind of go away in that regard. Um, that's my gut feeling. I don't think Biden's going to challenge Hillary. Because the globalists want to move their agenda forward. They don't want a, another Democrat in. I mean, they would be dead in the water. Yeah, the Republicans are capable now of moving this war agenda. Remember, in the next eight years, we're going to see this World War III. And I think they want a Republican in office, as they had George W. Bush during the 9-11 catastrophe, uh, uh, because he can convince conservatives to go along. You have Ted Cruz following a neocon script. I mean, it's just embarrassing how badly he's bought into the uh, Syrian agenda. And the same with Donald Trump. Uh, you know, he, he has a little bit of light on the subject, having revealed that, uh, you know, Bush administration knew uh, that an attack was coming on the World Center. Not only did they know, of course, it was a government operation from beginning Let's talk to about end. that when we come back. Joel Scalzen, World, World Affairs Brief. Joel Scalzen was a officer in the Marine Corps, fighter, Pilot, bomber, Vietnam, best-selling author, uh, of course, was his famous uncle, Cleon Skousen, the naked communist, and then other books exposing how the ultra-rich actually fund communism and socialism to domesticate the public. And he writes for World Affairs Brief, one of the most accurate, in-depth uh, publications out there that really goes into the hard research to understand what's happening. And, of course, Joel Skousen also understands this is a spiritual conflict. I've always been a Christian, brought up a Christian. I've had a relationship with Christ since I was a you know, young man. But at the same time, I never really doubted God. But the more research I did and the more I studied the New World Order and the more I dug into it, these people are into the occult. They believe in God and the devil. They believe the devil's God. And they really follow it, and they're really getting power from it. And the atheist out there, that's that whole system that's pushed by the establishment, some of them are true believers that there isn't a God, there's nothing outside of the five senses. But at the higher levels, I've found, they're actually occultic servants of this system, and they don't want the public even knowing there is a spiritual realm taking place but look at us we're on a planet on the edge of a galaxy there's hundreds of billions of galaxies that have been photographed there's all these teeming you know uh, billions of, of planets hundreds of millions sometimes per galaxy all these dimensions they've discovered and then they just sit around saying there's nothing going on there's nothing happening just 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 watch television watch dancing with the stars Go back to sleep. Uh, uh, everything's fine. This is all an attempt to keep people from awakening. It's an attempt to destroy your free will. And we're going to get Joel Skousen's take on the larger conspiracy here in a moment, get into some of the economic issues, uh, the parallels between Carson and Trump, but also what makes them different, and then take your calls. Briefly, if you go to InfoWarsStore.com, you can buy the big, thick, color coffee table book. It's like a textbook on the safest, best countries, regions, subregions to live. It's Strategic Relocation, the book. We also made a film that goes with it that's uh, updated. But this is the latest edition of the book as well. And you can get both of those discounted together or get all three together with his best-selling book, The Secure Home. And you may think you know a lot about secure regions or how to have a secure home or secure areas of the world. Believe me, folks, you will learn a lot watching this film and reading the book. It's available at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Also, we're running a bunch of big specials this week. Free shipping, 
on all the super high quality storable foods under the InfoWars Select name, which is just my Patriot Supply, but I can offer it lower than they can if I private label. That's why we did it, so we could have the lowest price on their food of anybody. And we do. And a lot of folks are getting upset by it, and who knows how long this can go. Free shipping and 10% off, InfoWarsStore.com or InfoWarsSelect.com will take you right there to the subpage. I am an aggressive free market capitalist. That's, that's pro-pure G2 systems. Been selling them four years. We're now the biggest distributor in the world. It's a major company because we sell for the lowest price, um, even better than Amazon. If you expand on that, we've got the widest selection of non-GMO, non-hybrid heirloom seeds. Carry a whole bunch of different companies. Have the lowest prices there. Infowarsstore.com. We have free shipping and 10% off on the water filtration systems. Speaking of that, Infowarsstore.com, Infowarslife.com, or Infowarsselect.com. Now, Infowarsstore.com is the big umbrella site, but if you want to go directly to the storable foods or directly to the Hillary for Prison t-shirts or directly to the, the, the high-quality uh, nutraceuticals, they have their own sub-URLs or just click on the nav bar on the left-hand side of the page and know that your purchase of these products funds what we can say is the tip of the spear in trying to alert people. Doesn't mean we're perfect. Doesn't mean I have all the answers. Doesn't mean that we always get it exactly right. We're trying to get it right. We have a really good track record. Our guests have a great track record. We're promoting freedom. And when you shop with us, you make the globalists very upset because you're voting with your dollars. You're voting with your euros. You're voting with your yin, your yan. You are funding the growth of movements that are anti-New World Order. And as the globalists get more arrogant and more aggressive and as things get worse, those of us that have set ourselves up in opposition against them are only going to get stronger because people realize this is real now. But in that paradox, they're coming after us. And that's why there's all these admissions all over the world, they're going after free speech, arresting Germans that try to rally against open borders, uh, you know, banning American flags in schools, charging 15 Alabamans, or no, Georgians, it's also having Alabama, uh, with terrorism for having rebel flags out of the park. I mean, they're charged saying the flag is an act of terror. This can be projected onto any speech now. So I'm all over the map here uh, with our guest, from World Affairs Brief, the editor-in-chief over there, Joel Skousen. Uh, finish up with 9-11, if you would, with your view. I know it's hard to know exactly what happened, but the official story we know is a fraud. And then finishing up with where Ted Cruz is going versus some of the other candidates. And then I want to go to phone calls, Joel Skousen. Well, Alex, as I have been very open in my website, in my newsletter, I believe that 9-11 was a government operation from beginning to end. It's not just they let it happen. You can't explain all of the complexity of 9-11 unless it was a government operation from the loading of explosives into the building to the loading of explosives into the airplane that hit the, the Pentagon, uh, which blew it to confetti-sized pieces. A bomb in the cargo bay doesn't do that. It has to be loaded in wings, tails, every portion of it. Um, the, the switching of aircraft, the radar tapes show that the 9-11 hijacked aircraft switched with other aircraft coming from the West Coast um, over the Midwest, and that those airplanes went elsewhere. I mean, hijackers couldn't do that, um, uh, as well as uh, the modification of the aircraft that actually hit the, uh, uh, the Pentagon, the cover-up. You know, all of the government suppression of information, the cover-up of the uh, testimony of Mineta in the White House Situation Room, where Dick Cheney basically said, you know, you got to let that aircraft hit the, hit the Pentagon. I mean, uh, Trump doesn't even have half the story uh, about the evils of the Bush administration. Of course, I don't think that George W. Bush uh, was running the show any more than Barack Obama, Obama's running the show right now. But he certainly was knowledgeable. I mean, he wasn't even surprised when he was told that the towers were hit, just nodded his head and went on uh, uh, with his uh, elementary school uh, uh, reading session. And then, of course, they were taken to off at Air Force Base in, uh, in Omaha for safekeeping. Um, 
There's just too much involved with 9-11, including the suppression of the air traffic 